Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the Broken Shore, the Demon Invasions and the Artifact Traits Progression questline. So starting with the Shore, first thing that you have to do is talk to Khadgar and literally get flown right into a scenario which is kind of similar to the Legion Entry one, apart from it's solo and our attacks actually have a large impact on the zone rather than ending with some of our leaders dying. The scenario itself was alright, the idea here is that we're going to essentially be taking out one of their main headquarters to gain control over the area by killing off demon leaders and destroying portals. I won't say too much beyond that as it was kinda cool and I don't really want to spoil anyone's experience, but players who are reasonably geared won't have many issues here as the mobs are fairly weak and don't have a huge amount of health, it seems to be more aimed towards the average player going in with around 855 to 870 item level. When I first did this on my mage who was up at 890 it was very easy because the mobs would just drop like flies. But enough about the scenario, how is the new zone? Well you start off in what seems to be a little camp with a few buildings being constructed around it. These will progressively be built up over time as you and other players on your realm go into the Broken Shore and take part in the content. As far as content in the zone goes though, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot to do immediately, but the quests you were given at the start kind of hint towards there being more, but since this is PTR we don't really know unless Blizzard decides to open it up for us. However, as we build our hub on the Broken Shore then more content will steadily become available. But with that being said, what is available? Well, currently the main content seems to be entirely revolved around completing world quests, which are scattered across the zone. These are pretty much the same idea as the current ones already available on the live servers, but some of them did feel quite unique. Like this one for example where you control a water elemental to put out fell fires. I like this one quite a bit, although it is kind of similar to playing as the different animals in high mountain, but something about it did still feel refreshing. As for the rewards from these world quests, we will be getting the base amount of artifact power and of course gold, but we will also be getting legion fall war supplies, which is the new currency that is collected by all players, which is essentially going to be used to further the construction of the buildings within the broken shores hub. Now looking at the Broken Shores hand and board, we can see that there are multiple buildings that you can assign your war supplies to. It's kind of going to be up to you to pick and choose which building you want to invest in, but currently there are three main buildings that you can construct. The Mage Tower, the Command Center and the Nether Disruptor. These buildings have two traits each, one of them adds content that you can take part in. These include artifact challenges which have been talked about a lot by Blizzard as well as various buffs, portals and bonus treasure chests chests. However, two of the first traits seem to provide world bosses and dungeon quests. These will most likely be specific to the zone as we do definitely have room for bosses and the dungeon quest can be specific to the new dungeon called the Cathedral of Eternal Light. The second trait of each of the buildings gives what seems to be a buff. They are all different but are still very interesting. The Mage Tower gives Knowledgeable which provides the chance to get bonus artifact power whenever you loot an item that gives you artifact power. The Command Center gives War Effort which provides a 30% chance to provide double war supplies whenever you receive them. And the Nether Disruptor provides Seal Your Fate which honestly sounds really cool as each day a Disruptor is active you can come back to the Broken Shore to do a quest which will give you an extra bonus roll. It's definitely going to be useful for Raiders but just how often they will be available is kind of questionable but either way it's going to be free bonus rolls. Also whenever you hand in war supplies you will be awarded with a reward box. Unfortunately it doesn't seem to be implemented fully yet, but I can imagine it's probably similar to an emissary cache as you do need to complete the same amount of world quests. It's probably there as a reward to push players to keep doing the content as honestly most people are probably worn out of world quests having been doing them for the last 5 months. Now much like Tanan Jungle in the Timeless Isle, this zone also has rare elites which hopefully drops some pretty cool collectibles and probably war supplies as well. It also looks like this zone has tried to take something from both of the other zones as it seems that Blizzard have taken the buff statues from the Timeless Isle over and they have also taken the vendor over from Tanan that allows players to buy gear using nether shards. Now if you look back to the pre-patch of Legion you may remember that nether shards were a currency that were awarded by taking part in demon invasions. It's kind of cool that these could be making a return but since this is PTR it could also just be a placeholder. 
But speaking of demon invasions, that is our next topic. And honestly, I'm pretty happy to see these coming back, as I felt they were a ton of fun in the pre-event, and I think bringing these into the environment of the Broken Shore could be pretty damn interesting. Not to mention that these invasions actually do count as world quests, so you don't have to worry about them taking up spots as they do count towards your daily emissary caches. Overall, from my experience attempting a few of these invasions, they are pretty fun. I think that maybe the impact on the game world in comparison to the pre-patch has decreased a bit, but overall I still think that they are fairly enjoyable to do, and it does switch it up a bit from only having the standard world quests. Also, it is likely that the nether shards that I mentioned earlier will also drop from invasions, considering that that was the main source for them on the Legion pre-patch. It would make sense that they were also available here, however, currently on the PTR it does not seem like they are, so we will have to wait and see. So how these invasions seem to be working right now is every four hours a zone will go under attack, much like what was going on in the Legion pre-patch. Once you enter a zone under attack, you will be given a quest which requires you to defend four areas from Legion attacks. There are multiple areas that you can go and defend, all of which involve elite mobs and are labelled as world quests. After completing this quest, you will be able to talk to one of the main story arc characters in that zone, gain another quest to do, and then after that be able to enter a scenario, which is pretty much just finishing off the invasion by taking out the leader. These scenarios are for multiple players, much like the ones back from Mists of Pandaria, but don't seem to have the same amount of difficulty, which is a bit of a shame. However, I do like the idea that scenarios are coming back. I think it's a nice addition to the invasions, and I very much look forward to playing through them on the live servers as well. Also, at the end of some scenarios, you get to fight the final boss on top of a spaceship, which is really damn cool. Although, yes, it is similar to the last boss of New Karazhan, but I really like that fight. Whenever I think back to it, I always remember how fun and unique that fight was, and I really want to see more stuff like that in the future. Oh, and when you land on the spaceship, there is at least something that can kill you while walking up, as these imps and fell sprayers can actually do a lot of damage, but overall aren't that hard to handle. However, I do still kind of question how long they will last before everyone gets tired of them. Moving on to artifact weapons, unlocking the ability to get the new traits is fairly straightforward. All you have to do is head back to the hub on the Broken Shore, and Khadgar will have a quest called About Those Greater Threats. After picking up the quest, head down onto the shore, and kill off demons until you get a quest item. This item required me to head to Dalaran and play through a short quest chain, which eventually awarded me with the ability to spend artifact power on new traits. However, it also refunded me all of the artifact power I had spent on traits down to level 35, and the new traits seem to cost a hell of a lot. But we do still need to factor in that artifact knowledge will also be increased, and level 26 is rumoured to be like double the increase of level 25, also, this could still fall under a placeholder, but that kind of seems unlikely. But anyway, that's it for this video. What are you guys looking forward to most in patch 7.2? Make sure to let me know in the comments section down below, and also don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.